Thank God it's Friday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Tokwe Marco Dige. How are you? I'm very good. I've actually not sat down here in a very, very long time. Um, because I know people, some, some people like to sit down here. So I hand off to sit down anywhere else. <laughs> so it's interesting to have to sit here. You two of you yeah. dodge this. <laughs> Um, it's been a full week of being on the show every day. It's all very right. interesting. Um, I feel like I'm up to date on all that is happening politically and mm -hmm. non-politically in Nigeria. Um, but it's also been a full week of um, doing my real estate executive, real estate mentorship and mastery yeah. program. And mm -hmm. the feedback oh, that has been, mm -hmm. don't worry, don't worry. I did not want to hey. really travel, travel. <laughs> Expenses hey. are plenty. There's no need. Oh, Let's wow. just do like, did not make that <laughs> <laughs> because I, I actually feel that the, there were two people that were in the venue that had won cars from previous companies. So they were, these people have been in the industry long before me. Oh. And they're sitting down to learn from me, asking questions. And they keep saying, we've gotten so much value. So I'm, I'm grateful that, mm -hmm. I'm grateful to God that I chose to dream and do. Mm -hmm. You know, many people dream and they don't execute mm -hmm. on yeah. those dreams. And I think it's extremely important. There are so many lives waiting for you to execute on your dreams. So please as many of you watching, just go for it. Even if it's just one person that shows up, at least that person will be impacted by whatever you decide to oh, do. Fantastic. Well done. Congratulations. Exactly. Hello, Ramat. Hello. I haven't seen you in a while. Honestly. You're welcome. I know you've been coming. It's me that has been I've not been around yet. Yes. How are you doing? We're fine. We just finished Ramadan, so mm -hmm. at least we have some small time Did to you rest. Kill Ram? <laughs> no, no, no. This is not the one that we killed. I know, but the one in two My neighbor killed Ram. Ah, ah, no. My neighbor, very rich man. Ah, 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 yesterday. That's good, though. Not did two year Ram. Oh, oh ah, you guys are doing well on shampoo to like today and you guys, I well, have to greet him. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Oh, the we did fantastic ram. And we yeah. aired the whole neighborhood. We had with the uh, grills, wow. we party, we used it. I, I enjoyed Correct. It. Everything. We, we just did um, fried rice, jollof rice, normal stuff in the house, yeah. cake and everything. And then just relaxed. Friends came in and nice. then we had a oh, wonderful fantastic. time. And also today is my dad's 70th birthday. Oh. Oh, if we're another tribe in Nigeria, who mentioned that tribe? The party that will have gone before. 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 I'm just imagining my dad standing in front of cake and plenty of people be like, me, me, okay, what do you add like? I know, just we got a rock, we got a rock. Amaka fresh. I am got to do it. I'm good. So, yes, I'm meeting her for the first time. She's a lady. No. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to retreat yeah. all of us to come together. I know, yeah. super amazing. So, um, with the long holiday, it's been a work holiday for me, yeah. but I made sure to work and also enjoy. Trust <laughs> me now. And then yesterday was the pre uh, birthday bash for Obi Kubana. This yeah. is a big shout out to Obi oh. Kubana. That's the really birthday. Birthday. So around one. Yeah. Yes, so uh, tonight we will book. It's going to be a long weekend of fun. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know. So, yes, yes started so. yesterday night at the dinner. Yeah. And then it will, it, it, um, we now continue today. Uh -huh. So, Obi Kubana, happy birthday. Happy Wishing birthday. you all the best yeah. ever. Fantastic. That's yeah. good. You probably rockers. My all these Lagos rockers. <laughs> yeah. But me, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Mr. Mushud. Yesterday, I really enjoyed the hangout yesterday. We had fun in the house, in the neighborhood. We got music, you know. Wow. He gave me shampoo, and I'm like, hmm. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> YK, I was putting YK's uh, spirit on. But mm -hmm. I thank God for sanity. <laughs> you you controlled. We had... <laughs> We had lots of suya, was fantastic. Oh. I mean, I've not had ram suya, I think it's been a while. Oh, okay. Ram suya is unbelievable. Ram suya is different. Yeah, different. What? The parties now. It's the best. We don't eat it all the time. Yeah, we don't eat it all the time. Yeah. Ram suya is a different yeah. level. Yeah. What? Ram meat is different. Just, ram just yeah, just they're not supposed to suya spice. Yeah. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That thing was on point. Yes. Why is the food is so No, no, no. I love it. I was taking plates and I was sit I was rushing into my house. Yeah, my house will be here. I'll go back in. I'll take another plate. I'll take another plate. I'll take another plate. I'll share in the love. Let's go on a break. It's Friday. 
and we come back we'll go to the front pages of the paper stay with us we'll be right back stay tuned your view will be right back all right we're going to start with the nation Air pieces entry sparks airfare war on Lagos, London routes and others. Tributes flow for ex-minister Ogbonaya Onu. Zenith Bank records 125% growth in gross earnings. Deepening boardroom crisis tears Eco Disco apart. Okay, that's um, any story here? Okay, yes, yeah, so I have the um, air piece story. So airfares on European routes have crashed considerably following the entry of airpiece into the Lagos-London um, route with lower fares. The reduction in fares by foreign airlines, some experts fear, may be part of the unwholesome practices by major carriers to harass the Nigerian carrier oh. out of the Lagos-London route. Oh. Airpiece's inaugural flight was on March 30th. However, some experts have noted that the reduction in airfares may be connected with the strengthening of the Naira clearance of the backlog of funds owed by foreign carriers by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, even though they're saying, some experts are saying that the owner of um, Epis Airline, um, Onyema, Alain Onyema, is saying otherwise. He's saying that they're trying to do that um, and really trying to, to go, yeah, to sabotage um, Epis and to really go below the um, the, 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 um, the normal yeah. um, stand, uh, the normal uh, cost of um, Fairs and that their countries are supporting them to do that, which is wrong, yeah. right? In order to frustrate them out. But then I'm also happy that yesterday he stated that Epis um, route from Lagos to London is fully booked up, up until September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've not bought, bought my ticket. I bought my ticket already. I'm so sad. You bought your ticket already. Yes, August. So long. Yeah. I, I, I said, I bought my so ticket. Papa, papa. Yesterday, I said, oh my goodness. Like, why did I waste so long? Ah, no. I'll figure it out. I'll find a way out. What? No. Yes. I have but, bought, <laughs> I have bought yeah. my ticket oh. quickly. Yeah. But I, I, was, I wanted to upgrade, but I don't know yeah. if I'll be able to upgrade it. Mm -hmm. so, so, nice. Yes. So um, it was also said that uh, a large part of, to the best of their knowledge, the CBN has cleared a large part of the of the backlog. Yes, yeah. But then Alan Oyem also said that when he was, that they need government support because when he was living in the UK, that the UK airlines didn't buy aviation fuel at the same cost yeah, yeah. as, as uh, foreign airlines. But in Nigeria, they are, they are buying at the same cost. And so yeah. the Nigerian government really has to support um, yeah. um, APIs right yeah, now. Yeah. In order to, it reminds me of the yeah. whole high TV story. Same yes. thing. Yeah. We, needed, we needed government support at the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right now we, we, have, we have this, and we need to government must back it up. Back yes, it everything. Back it, up. Yes. it happened with us. That's why high yeah. competition. That's one of the and reasons like why. The between all the Look other at the prices have really dropped. British yes. Airways yes. Yes. has dropped. Yes. Virgin. Everybody has dropped. The difference you know, is so much. I was going to say mm -hmm. the local local um, indigenous companies mm -hmm. will struggle with. Yes. Globally yeah. supported. Yes, yes. it happened. If Nigeria doesn't support yes. its own, exactly. multi choice was backed by the government yeah. back then. Yeah. We didn't yeah. have that kind of backing when yeah. ITV was trying to survive. Yeah. So, listen, we just need to support this man's business mm -hmm. the best we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, another story in um, Nation. I was going to take the story with um, Eco Disco. So, directors in the boardroom, they said that the boardroom crisis is thickening and is deepening. They are bickering over what they described as undue personalization of board authority, abuse of due process, and vested interest uh, for managerial crisis around alleged ghost workforce and call for proper investigation. The crisis has uh, the crisis obviously has deepened and engulfed the entire company and its private holding um, companies. If you recall, the way crisis between um, the the MDs being sacked or not being sacked, uh, one of the eleven discos controlled uh, the, the control about one sixth. Of, prop, of power distribution across several um, regions within Lagos Ogun Access. Mm. According to the documents obtained, the crisis has become a polar fight between the chairman, Mr. Um, Otubu, and the few directors on, on one side, majority of the directors on the other side. So both are having a lot of bickering going on, but we just yeah. hope that they can resolve this quickly because mm. we, hope we don't want it to affect the service, service that, uh, that, they're that they are rendering to customers. So, um, really sad um, story. The story about the passing of the former Minister for Science and Technology and the first civilian governor of Abia State, Dr. Ogunaya Onu, um, who, was, who served as the immediate past, in the immediate past administration of um, um, President Buhari before he now resigned to step in to um, 
to, to become, was aspiring to become the governor, mm -hmm. um, stepped down. He was 73 years old. He was an author, engineer, the president, um, the current president, President Tinubu, the former president, President Buhari, as well as many other dignitaries have, you know, um, they mourn, they sent their condolences. He's someone that has explored many areas of interest and succeeded in those areas, serving his country, building, and um, the, our heart goes out to his entire family. He governed Ambia State before there was creation of Abia and a Boeing State, so it was more like the old Abia State. Um, it was a very, is a major, under the platform of um, the Nigerian Republican, Con uh, Re Republican Convention. I had goes out to his family. This is like an exit of a giant mm -hmm. in both, in terms of governance, in terms of politics, and in terms of the, his dedication towards the growth of Nigeria. So I had goes out to the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, okay, so I have a story. <laughs> on, yes, I Go have ahead. a story on Zenit Bank, <clears throat> a short story actually. Zenit Bank um, records um, high... Zeni Bank PLC has achieved 125% growth in gross earnings to 2.132 trillion in this audited result for the year ended December 31st, 2023. The gross earnings represents remarkable triple digit growth compared with 945.6 billion reported in 2022. The growth, the growth they say, is primarily, primarily due to growth in interest and non-interest income, which increased from 112 percent, than 540 billion in 2022, to 1.1 trillion in 2023. Growth is attributed to the growth, to the growth in the size of risk assets and their effective repricing alongside the rise in the yield of the other interest um, becoming in, uh, instruments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on quickly now to the punch, FG plans compensation in nine states puts cost at 15 trillion naira. Wigwe Ogumbajo's family sues U.S. firm for helicopter crash. Law to terminate many cases at uh, appeal courts coming, says AGF. Niger's oil production drops again, now 1.23 uh, barrels per day, says OPEC. Government shuts Dosumil markets on Wolu hints at building demol dem demolition. Junior Pope, AGN, suspends Riverside movie shootings. Police launch probe. Navdak bans turkey-made um, soap. Tracks fake Indian injection power, powder, actually. And make Yoruba teaching language in Southwest schools, says Atheni Ferry. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let's, I think, I'm not sure we have time for that. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Mark has a story. Go ahead, please. Yeah, it was this story really saddens my 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 yeah. heart uh, because this was an avoidable death. death. Yeah, it was a Black Wednesday for the Nollywood family and fans of actor Paul Odunwu, popularly known as Junior Poop, mm. as he met his untimely death while on board a boat crossing the River Niger on Wednesday. Um, like from what we heard too and what we saw, the videos that I saw. Um, no, but they weren't wearing, they were like 12 on the boat and they weren't wearing life jackets. None of them was wearing life jackets. And then um, one of the men on the, on the boat actually said he offered, before the journey started, he poured Fanta into the, into the river and then he, and some, he threw in some um, notes, some Naira notes. And then also uh, threw in some snacks, that, uh, pieces of snacks that he was eating and said that it's to appease the gods for for them to, for, yeah, for Johnny Messi, for them to be able to cross over. And then that he also gave some kids that were playing around the river some, some money. And that uh, Junior Pope had asked him, like, why are you doing that? And he said, it's for safe passage. Like, you have to do that. You have to give something for safe passage. Um, we also saw from the video that Junior Pope was also doing, uh, a, doing a live, uh, like a video saying that, ah, they should take it as you. He's the only child. I have two children. Let me go train them. Let me go train them. And it's so sad that this kind of thing happened. And then what also caught my attention in the whole saga is the fact that, okay, and I, the, the emergency response came 
came immediately when this happened. But that was why some people were actually rescued. Mm -hmm. But what really hurt me was I saw a video where they said they took him to the mortuary yeah. and then they said he was still alive. Instead mm -hmm. of taking him, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yes, instead of taking alive. him to the, yes, he was still alive. Instead of taking him to the hospital, mm -hmm. they were, I saw the video. I remember, I wonder, this was crazy. It took mm -hmm. a long time for them to drive to back to the forest or wherever it is they went to. The to the river. To the river. And to then the they ritual. carried him to do the rituals. And I was watching this, I'm saying, are these people okay? What's going on here? I just were not educated enough to know that in situations like this, yes. you should take the person to the hospital. Common sense is not common. Ah, because the emergency said, response is a major problem. Um, because we could, from that, from the drama that happened, yes. they, there was a lot of speculation. Is he dead? Is he not dead? Oh, he's alive. Mm -hmm. And the, the, I now heard that it was the ritual before my they called back said, to the hospital. But, 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 said something. She mm -hmm. said that may God not allow us to be with the wrong people at the wrong time. Yes. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to have rushed him to the hospital okay. immediately. Yes. They yeah. said yeah. he was still but alive there, at the mortuary. But is there no law that you doesn't know? allow the, 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 the people to community. Co to, the community to take the body instead of the emergency response team mm -hmm. to handle whatever that is going on at that point <sighs> in time? Really, really this sad. This is sad. Uh, let me take the story of NAFDAQ. NAFDAQ, that's a national agency for food and drug administration and control has banned the sale of a turkey-made Dex Luxury Bar Soap. It's really popular um, soap. It's also called the Nigerians to watch out for the counterfeit Tandak injection powder mm -hmm. made in India. These, they're saying, are uh, they're, they're pr products that have been barred. Navdak on its website said Dex Luxury Bar Soap does not comply with cosmetic products regulation. It contains quite a few components that has been, that has been barred and is that it has risk of harming reproductive systems, causing harm to health and the unborn child. Wow. Um, as a result of the ban of the marketing of the product, it has been placed on some regulatory and public authorities. So NAVDAC is saying that, that, um, the, um, that soap is not, um, should not be used. It's quite harmful uh, for usage. And there was another product they said that um, that has been bad also. That's the Tandak injection powder made in India. This is the healthcare professionals and consumers are advised to report any suspicion of adverse reactions or substandard for survival regulation concerning this particular powder for injection? How do regular Nigerians know? How would I know which injection? Mm -hmm. yeah, so these are health, so this is for healthcare the, workers. Yeah, healthcare workers. Okay, okay. Yeah, watch out. Okay, another story in punch. Yeah, so I have the um, the Dosimu shutdown of the market. Mm. Governor Babajide Sanwolu of Lagos State has vowed that more buildings will be demolished to allow for proper cleanup of the Dosimu market. Interesting. Yeah, mm. because when the fire came up. When the fire was out, they were trying to go and, you know, put it off. But the yeah. people refused to, they didn't allow those people to have access to it. Always and happens. if you notice, most of the buildings in that market, they are so close to each other, yeah. clustered yeah. Mm. together. And then you now find out that there are generators by the side of the building. Everybody's just putting generators mm. anywhere and all. Mm. So 14 buildings were affected. And then he said they are going to, they are going to demolish the whole And he's going to take his time. He's not going to open the markets anytime soon. He's going ah. to take his mm. time yeah. and make sure that all the necessary... Oh, that's um, this have a lot. Yes. That's where we buy souvenirs, right? Think that's where we buy souvenirs. All, all our parties, how we all now get to this? Something is coming. Everything and I think he needs to go to the whole Balogu market, ah. honestly. Ah. Because, you know, every now and then... It's for some people own Balogu. Some people's family own houses. And they have houses. Apart from that, and some people's businesses shut down for three months. Is That's like the end of it. That area is my village. Village. That's yeah. that, is that place, my village. How can you can't just demolish my village like that? <laughs> yeah. Demolish your village. For health and safety, at the end of the day, Trump's, Trump's, because yeah. every health now and, and then, at the end of the day, Trump's and any other thing. Trump, All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to tell a story about Yoruba um, language. So while I was in Akure, Murayo, we need to bring this guy on the show. Mm. This is an Oyimbo. Is a Babalawo Oyimbo, Babalawo from ah. Mexico, mm. and he was speaking Yoruba and. He was saying all this our native Ijile, Ewi, Owe. That's and true. all of that. So I, I already got his number that I'll bring him on the show. But the Afeniferi Pan, Pan Yoruba Social um, Political oh. Organization, Afeniferi, on Thursday said that we should make Yoruba compulsory. That Yoruba is the, in, the, the deep Yoruba is fading out of our southwest region. Um, and that the, they're the, the, the deliberating on how to make it a compulsory language mm, between yeah. primary and secondary within Southwest. So it is, op it is compulsory in primary, but it is optional in yeah, secondary. Yeah. But they're saying we should make it compulsory so that the expression, people's expression would be deepened in Yoruba, especially in other areas of the South. So in Lagos, you feel they're a modern city, but some other Southwestern states that are not even as open still don't allow their children in primary school to speak Yoruba language. Mm. So they're the meeting um, today is going to encourage governments and gov um, government officials to create 
um, um, supports and boosts the use of Yoruba language. They, in that same conference in Akure, there was a competition and there was price money for those who could interpret the English to Yoruba. And it was interesting to see. I failed yeah. all of this, all <laughs> the questions. Well, you know, this right. speaking <laughs> of language starts from home, I yeah, think, actually. Yeah. We parents, we don't even speak yeah, um, our language, yeah. our mother tongue to so our kids. Yeah. Mm. Most sad. of them don't know how to speak their mother tongue. I'm grateful that we are, we are <laughs> working with yes. grandma. Yes. <laughs> we're working with it. It's not grandma. It's not grandma anything. Grandma, grandma, grandma is not. Grandma is not Just have to be. Vanguard. Lagos Calabar Coastal Road, opera over cost as federal government proposes 3,000 naira per toll gate. Hey, I didn't read that story. Who has asked? I read it. Oh, very good. Yeah. Please, we need to read that story. Yeah. Audily declares for Barra leader of PDP in rivers. Junior Pope, how Fanta money I sprayed in river saved. Oh, how Fanta money I sprayed in river saved me, say survival. Yeah, that, that was that story. <laughs> Christian Elder Sutini will adopt the 2014 Confab report. We go why Ogumba and Joe's family sued charter company over helicopter crash. Minister apologizes for saying Nigerians keep freezers on due to low tariff. Okwama army invades another Delta community, arrests 10, raises homes. Mm -hmm. And manufactured goods imports rise by 269% to 9 trillion naira exports decline. Okay, which story? So the major headline, which <clears throat> is about the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road, which Many of us in real estate have been using to market. Some of our estates are there if you're interested. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the sad story is that um, the good story, let me start with the good story, mm -hmm. landmark property will remain intact. Yeah. yeah. So they said the 700 kilometer road will not, there will be no loss of job. That um, the, the, our minister, minister for works, we must hail him. David Dumai is working on this one. I'm not going to even, he said that he visited the place himself. Mm -hmm and said that they were f it's going to cut into 50 meters of the land, yeah. but it's going to only affect the shorelines. It's not affecting the the, property. his property, mm -hmm. his building itself, which means people might not be able to access, and it is being marketed. It will affect the business a bit, but maybe they'll be able to find a solution after the mm -hmm. construction has taken place, mm -hmm. because it is marketed as a beachfront, and access to the shoreline is mm -hmm. part of the selling point mm -hmm. of that particular location. He also mentioned that um, there'll be no permanent structural damage, the, no jobs will be lost, and um, that the, he's interested in ensuring that we preserve what is working on ground. Then he said that they proposed a 3,000 naira toll fee on um, vehicles passing. I, 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 I recall reading that there was 1,005 for cars and 3,000 for other kind of vehicles that would be along that way. He said, the, let me just concentrate on the tolls and put 50,000 vehicles on an average, passing that road will make the money. Putting 3,000 to 1,500 per car, big trucks can pay 5,000, cars, uh, jeeps, 3,000. In 15 years, we can make back the money and dismiss the call on the cost of the budget of the road being high because the, the, the road is cost, it will be costing a lot of money just covering for the buildings that would... The, the collapse that will take place will be costing mm. 1.5 billion. So, like, mm. there's a lot of money that we used to pick for compensation along yeah. that road. Mm -hmm. But he's saying that, according to his calculations, mm -hmm. when they toll the road, mm -hmm. by the time 50, just getting more cars to pass through, mm -hmm. you make that money back. And I think that's the mindset of people that are thinking mm -hmm. development within yeah. the society. So, so Lagos to Calabar, mm -hmm. it would be a very, it would be straight, yeah. straight, smooth road. Wow. It would encourage a lot of businesses and it would yes. congest. They can then have time to fix the old other mm -hmm. roads that yes. have gotten bad over the years. Okay, so I think let's it's find another story in Vanguard. Mm -hmm. um, so the Christian, the National Christian Elders Forum, NCEF, have urged our president to adopt the recommendations of the CONFAP report back 2014. Um, speaking at the press briefing, chairman of the forum, Dr. Samuel Ghani, highlighted the relentless ass um, assault by Islamist insurgents in the north and the displacements caused by foreign invaders across Nigeria. I said this is the time for indigenous ethnic groups to carefully distinguish their allies from their adversaries. The extensive loss of life in Nigeria involving indigenous Christians and Muslims and traditionalists demonstrates that these groups face a common enemy, which is the foreign invaders. So the ongoing violence in Nigeria is not driven by indigenous ethnic groups. Regrettably, some local actors have been misled into believing they were pursuing a religious cause. But the real orchestrators are those foreign invaders, and we must... Um, do everything we can to um, is when we do this when we implement this comfort report that everybody can then be able to have some kind of a, a, a become a stakeholder in the issue of security within their various regions okay so i have um Ugeli, troops of the nigerian army conducting a cordon and search operation over the march 14 killing of 17 military personnel at okwama 
Onugeli South Local Government Area of Delta State yesterday invaded another community, Olota, and allegedly whisked away no fewer than 10 persons. This came on the day um, senior advocates of Nigerians and retired judges ripped apart the board of inquiry considered by defense headquarters to investigate the March 14 killing of military personnel at Okwama, saying he had no powers to do so because you cannot be a judge in your own matter. Mm -hmm. But Vanguard could not reach uh, Mr. Prosper, the president general of the Olota, but an eyewitness said the military men left with the community's chairman, Mr. Matthew Olopa, and over 10 others, and that they raised down some people's houses, that mm -hmm. all the, most of the jetties, all the jetties that were around there, all the, um, the boats that were around the jetty, all the speedboats that they took them away with. Yeah. They, they, they went away with them. So I'm wondering, like, are the military police, are they looking for more trouble? Can they just finish the one, <laughs> the, the inquiry of the one that, yeah, yeah before starting another, yeah. you know, bro, uh -huh. so, All right, let's, that's all we can take on front page review this morning. When we come back, we come back to our sponsor segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We have a special interview in celebration also for International Women's Month. Uh, we're going to shed a bit of light on um, an incredible initiative that supports women in pursuing internationally recognized degrees. Joining us on the studio is Mercy Ishiofune Sado. Yes. Yes, she's the CEO of GAMEC Infrastructure, remarkable UNICAF student, and most importantly, mother. And also we have Ayodele Olasami, who is UNICAF Marketing and PR Manager. Welcome you both to the show. Thank you so much. So Good before morning. I go into Messi's um, experience at Unicaf, let me start with you. All right. um, tell us about Unicaf and its offerings. Okay, well, I would like to start with um, Unicaf is a global online um, education platform tailored to provide online and on-campus program for students and individuals who are looking to upskill their careers. We are able to achieve this in partnership with um, universities in the United Kingdom, United States, and in Africa. Mm. In the UK, we are in partnership with the University of East London, University of Suffolk, and the Liverpool John Moores University. In the US, we are in partnership um, with um, the University of Riverside, California, where we offer our short courses. We have a huge presence in Africa, in 12 countries in Africa, including Malawi and Zambia. So what we have done is currently our university in Zambia is um, a state-of-the-art um, multi-million dollar investment in tech. We are looking to ensure that individuals don't necessarily have to come to the short four walls of the university before they have access to education. Mm. And that's why we are constantly pushing online degrees for all and sundry. And we are doing this through the UNICAF scholarship scheme. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So um, I think I should come to you, Mercy. I would like to find out from you what has your experience been being in the program? Unicaf, Unicaf. Yeah. yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> studying online through Unicaf, you know, has been a wonderful experience so far. You know, the program has been very helpful to me as a mother, as a woman. And of course, you know, <laughs> all the experiences I've got, even before I got into UNICAF, you know, uh, I've been able to build on myself. And of course, I've been able to work on, you know, certain areas like emotional intelligence as well, you know, because an ABA program is actually a great program that is actually very necessary, you know, for any entrepreneur that is looking forward to, you know, uh, building on, on the skills that he or she has actually acquired you know, so You're doing the MBA program. Yes. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So this question is for Messi. So, okay. um, how about the UNICAF um, scholarship, and how has that played a role in your educational journey? Okay. Uh, the UNICAF uh, scholarship is a game changer for me. I would mm. say, you know, because I was given a generous um, scholarship 
which reduced the cost of my fees considerably. You know, plus the fact that I get to pay the rest um, balance of my fees on a monthly installment. You spread it out. Yes, you spread it out, you know. And then, of course, you know, the Unicaf online uh, platform is very easy to navigate, mm. yeah. And then it uh, creates that enabling environment for you to actually study at ease. And at the same time, you know, you get to, you know, take time off after each module, mm -hmm. you know, for you to actually uh, attend to other things like family issues, you know, and work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So I, I want to come to you, sir, because um, it seems that Unicaf, Uni, one of the things that um, Unicaf keeps pushing is yes. um, support for, for making it easy for people yes. to attain education. Yes. What, why exactly is that your goal? And how was the, I feel like there's a bigger goal to this, for you to get more women into education or something. What's it about? Okay, um, put it this way, um, serving the underserved, that's what we are looking at. And you will understand that um, the glass ceiling approach is quite the in thing in any industry today. Mm -hmm. Most women are relegated to the background. And we are looking at it that, okay, not, the men doesn't have to steal the show all the time. Mm. There are some women that if given the opportunity, they will try more than men in their various workplaces. So we are looking at it this way. Offer generous scholarships, come and study with us online, upskill your career, grow yourself, harm yourself with the necessary degree and the skill sets that you need so that in your workplace, you won't be relegated and you'll be a force to reckon with. Let me come back to Mercy. So how did you find Unicaf and why did you choose the master's degree program in business administration? Okay. I got to know Unicaf um, through online. Yeah, I saw their posters on social media. And of course, I read nice comments as well from friends. And before then, I had already made up my mind to study for an MBA program. You know, so I did my research. And, you know, later on, I found out that it was pretty much easy, you know, to study through UNICAF because it gives you access to do other things as well, you know. So I put in for it, and since then, it's been wonderful, you know, starting from the application process, which was very seamless, you know, take it down to the tutors, the student advisors who are always very much available to take you through every challenges that you may come across as a student, you know, and since then, it's been a game changer for me. Okay, okay so um, I'm happy, um, from what you've said, it's mm -hmm. uh, crucial to note that UNICAF like, supports the work-life balance for students and prioritizing you know, their, the students' life. So if, before I move on to the lean spirit of um, the International Women's Day, can you share a word of encouragement and empowerment for women who want to also embark on such academic journey? Yes. Yes, I would want to, uh, like to encourage um, women out there who would want to pursue an MBA program to stand fearless, you know, be courageous and push through because uh, the UNICAF scholarship is actually a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a game changer for every woman out there who is looking out for, you know, and having uh, an, a higher academic qualification added to their current profile. And of course, you know, it's never too late, you being a woman. You need to be fearless as well, either single, young, old, or married. You know, you can as well achieve it because education is a key, you know, that can actually boost, you know, your future, either for you or for your family as well. Yeah. Okay, so Dele, you talked about a few degrees across. I, I want you to touch on, um, because people that, when they, when they hear UNICAF, they think in UK. We are saying there's US and there is even within Africa. So they can go to universities within Africa um, that are certified on the UNICAF. Is, just, is that what you're saying? Yes, what I'm saying, degrees are available? I'm say, we, UNICAF is strictly online. Okay. Um, we have um, bachelor's, master's, up to PhD level. For our UK universities, you study strictly online. The University of East London, where MS is currently undergoing our MBA program. We have the Liverpool John Moores University and the University of Suffolk. Now for our, for our universities in Africa, you can study online and you have um, up, um, the opportunity to do um, a sort of blended mode of learning in the universities of Malawi and Zambia, where UNICAF is currently um, resident. And so basically speaking, we are pushing online scholarship, okay. online education. Okay. We are looking to break the barrier of having to sit down in classroom mm. 247 when you can 
tailor your schedule to your own pace, right. work out your own schedule, say, okay, this moment, you can, tomorrow is a Saturday, I can decide tomorrow morning, okay, between the hours of 9 and 1 p.m., I want to attend lectures, I want to answer my questions, I need to do my assignments, work on my projects, and all of those things. That type of convenience is what UNICAF is actually pushing. Okay. Um, when you say the scholarship, scholarship, is there really a scholarship? There you know, is. Scholarship and the scholarship is not scholarshiping. <laughs> is there really scholarship? There is actually scholarship. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, let's put Numbers. it this way. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. Currently, um, an average um, master's degree program will cost you in the neighborhood of um, fifteen to nineteen thousand pounds or mm -hmm. US dollars. Mm -hmm. So we are telling you that okay, come to Unicap. Let's give you up to 75% scholarship. Come and study with us online. Let's take off the financial stress with you. Don't travel. Just come and do it online with us. There's no, discrimina there's no discrimina discrimination in degrees. All you just need to do is remain focused. Anybody that studies in the US, in University of East London, if I go to University of East London physically, it's not different from what Mercy is currently studying. Absolutely. The models are the same. The experience are the same. So what do you have to lose? And you pay Fantastic. about 70%. Then you pay just less. You pay the remaining 25 or 20%. Wow. And sometimes your, your, your resume even um, speaks to your um, scholarship level. Mm. Mm. Can you confirm what you're saying? The yes. Percentage yes. Is, <laughs> is calling. Absolutely, is, is yes. Scholarship is scholarship. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Yeah. You know, um, it's actually very wonderful. You know, uh, looking at it from the angle of, okay, you have opportunity to do other things as well. Um, I'll speak for myself as an entrepreneur. I, I still go about my normal business activities. I take care of my home as well. And at the same time, most especially in the evenings, I run my studies, you know, and it's actually very convenient. Right. The fees are very considerable okay. as well. So we have to wrap up with it. But let me do any final words on the, where do we find Unicap online, phone numbers, how do you reach Unicap? Okay, well, I'd like to add that um, for individuals who are willing to take advantage of the Unicap scholarship scheme, what they can do is to call us on 07000 triple zero. You can reach us via phone call or on WhatsApp. So I take it again. Zero one zero, zero seven thousand triple one triple, triple zero. Oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> so they can reach you, and then you're also yes, online. Yeah, we're also online. These are also available on um, on the um, undergrads, the yes bachelors. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. No nine. Yes. yes. Okay. It cuts Thank across. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so oh. much. Thanks. That's for all us. we can take on this segment. Up next is our special guest for today. The Minister of Power himself is in the building mm -hmm. and will be having a conversation with the elders, the female elders of Nigeria. So. Stay with us, so. we'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So our guest today, the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, has criticized Nigerians for leaving their refrigerators, air conditioners running while they're away from home, citing a lack of awareness from electricity consumption. That was what was trending, but he has come around to say that's not how he said it, and that was, it was misrepresented and misinterpreted. However, he's here with us on the show, Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very Good much. Good to have you. I'm happy to be here too. You know, we've been Good doing quite a uh, bit of media rounds and we're welcoming you to, welcome you to the Council of Women, right. to the Council of Nigerian Women. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. We love, we love to have you to, I'm because there are lots of here. issues concerning power. Yes. And we know you've been interviewed very recently amongst mm -hmm. the women yesterday night. And we watched the interview and we understand um, a few of the things you've said. And mm -hmm. concerning the refrigerator issue, you said it yesterday mm -hmm. that. Um, that was not how it was, what you were just saying, yeah. you were saying jokingly, and, you, and you, you offered an apology, yes. which we accept. Your apology mm -hmm. didn't mean it that we understand. <laughs> but one of the things um, I'd like to start with, I know the ladies allow me to start with, is that I got from your interview was that um, you, Mr. President, and all the stakeholders realized that you needed to inject liquidity into the power sector. Yes. And you said, hmm, where can I find the money? If I ask Nigerians to pay this money, they will scream. 
So let us find all those Banana Island, 15% of the consumers, those ones that they have small change. Let us force, let us quadruple or triple their tariff and get them to bear the brunt of this liquidity we are looking for. Now, the question is, was that a fair thing to do? Or is it even a legal thing to do to segment 15% of your consumers to have them pay that 225 uh, tariff, Naira, Naira tariff? Uh, is that fair? What, uh, was, that, was that a fair decision? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Once again, I say good morning to you ladies. Good morning. And I want to um, appreciate you for the good job that you've been doing. It's all in the line of uh, national service. Yes. And we appreciate you. Just keep it up. Uh, to start with, let me also make reference to your opening uh, statement with regard to what transpired in the last press briefing that we had, which I confirmed last night that I was actually quoted out of context, mm -hmm. that was actually a genuine innocent advice to my fellow Nigerians mm. that we should start cultivating the culture of uh, consumption management. And that, that advice was not even directed at everybody. Because I'm a Nigerian. And I know that a lot of people still are faced with epileptic power supply. I would not say, oh, you don't have up to 10 hours of supply. Switch off your freezer. I will not say that. Switch off your I will not say that. We are saying, for those that we are targeting now, the band A, in our transformation journey, once you start having stable electricity, the fact that we increase the tariff by over 200% does not automatically translate into 200% increase in your bill if you can manage it properly when you start having more than 20 hours of supply. That was my innocent advice. And I even passed it across jokingly in a very comical manner. I never knew it was going to be blown up. I know Nigerians are touchy. Nigerians are angry based on what they have suffered in the past in terms of energy poverty. So, like I said, uh, it's like a case of the landlord and the tenant. Yeah. When there's a disagreement, whether it's the tenant that is at fault, he must be the one to apologize. Okay. If it's the landlord, he must apologize. I say, okay, no problem. Just bear with us. But the good thing out of this is that uh, the thing has uh, provoked a national discourse with regard to the state of our electricity. It has created a national awareness. And the message was also not lost in all this. People are now aware that consumer, consumption management is very key to reducing our energy costs. So I'm happy okay. for that. Now, My co question. coming back to uh, the differential pricing <laughs> and the segmental mm. pricing of electricity. Let me tell you, electricity is a product. At the same time, it's a social service. And uh, if you have any industry, any sector, that operation is not allowed to follow the normal or natural commercial flow of commercial pricing of such a product the industry is going to get terminated in a short while mm. because investors they need to recover their costs and if possible make a markup on their investments but because of the criticality of the power sector of energy to everything we do government is ready to ensure that everybody has access to energy so you cannot treat it like the normal commercial product okay so the first intention was, oh, can we remove the tariff completely? We said, no, we cannot. Based on the fact that Nigerians are currently passing through a lot of hardships, yeah. based on certain recent decisions of government that are tough, but they are necessary. We have seen the harmonization of exchange rates that got the exchange rate escalated. We have seen the complete removal of the first subsidy. We have seen the inflation rate. We have seen so many things that have led to increase in cost of goods and services. And Nigerians are really suffering. Mr. President said, no, this is not the right time to remove subsidy completely. At the same time, the government that is bearing the subsidy, they are not able to source enough cash to back up this subsidy, which is why we have seen or witnessed the accumulated debt in the sector that we are owing the power sector operators, the generating companies, That's the right. gas supply companies, and all that. And it shows that there is paucity of fund, and lots and lots of other critical sectors competing for the same fund from government pockets. Okay. The subsidy requirement for 2024, for example, 
was to be about 2.9 trillion, almost 3 trillion naira. Our power. budget, yes, on power. Yes, our budget is 28 trillion. That is 10%. We are saying, no, let us be realistic. Let's be a bit reasonable and considerate with government. Government can never afford to fund a 3 trillion. Over 10% of our budget, when other sectors are there, yeah. we have housing, we have works, we have yeah. defense, yeah. health, education, and all that. We must, we must say, okay, let's look for a middle ground position. Let's look for the high-end electricity consumers that we believe that even when they don't have regular power supply, they can easily afford generators, petrol, or diesel to run. And we're saying, okay, if they could do this, why not let us ensure that this set of customers or consumers with very good infrastructure that is adequate enough to sustain stable electricity, let's start from them. Let's increase the tariff. We did not just quadruple or triple or double. It was not a random figure. We looked at what is the cost of producing electricity. Let them bear the full cost. Because this set of people are actually the ones that are consuming the larger portion of really? this subsidy, yes, mm. you have 15 percent. Yeah, we do. We have the data. 15 percent of customers that we talk about, about 1.5 million out of uh, over 20 million electricity consumers, they, their consumption is about 40 percent of market consumption, which means that the remaining 85 percent, they are enjoying just 60 percent of the subsidy. We're saying no. At the end of the day, they are also better off by increasing the subsidy because the subsidy, the, 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 the tariff that we have now with the removal of subsidy for band A, is still way cheaper than the cost of generating electricity individually by fuel or diesel-powered generator. So it was not arbitrary. It was scientifically and systematically arrived at. And we're saying that the power sector has stagnated for a long time. We must move forward. And once we want to move forward, let us start with a segment. And it's a stepwise transformation of the sector. All the other bands are likely to have eventually, but they're starting with bands. Once we are able to enhance or augment or upgrade the infrastructure that is necessary to provide them stable electricity. Please. So there will be value for money. We cannot charge anybody a higher tariff if you cannot enjoy stable electricity that will make you remove your generator, that will make you not to spend money on petrol or diesel or even servicing the generator. So people will be better off at the end of the day, the average cost will be much lower to every individual. Okay. But the promise and the pledge that we are making is that we will not increase any subsidy, any, any tariff when we are not sure of improvement in power supply. Okay. That is what we are saying. So which is why I said, oh, it's going to be more like a migration. It's a journey. Okay. And we must start from Let's somewhere. Let's get a few questions. So please. Nigerians should um, trust us. Oh. You didn't mean to hurt anybody. Honorable Minister, Thank you. I, I am, I've heard you. I am, I am not a fan, per se, because I felt that the power sector needs a whole lot more attention than I believe it's getting. And I'm sure you would admit that um, you, maybe it's an unfortunate thing that when you got into power, we seem to, all the problems now... Of course. He just, he, he, he just, everything just came up just when you mm. came in. Because I live in the band A zone. And I'll say that we've experienced worse power supply in the past few months. Yes. So if I have experienced a constant deterioration of my power supply, I've had, we've had grid shuts down yes. back, to back to back. Yes. And it affects everybody. And we've had that. We, we used to... I, Truthfully, we used to have 24 hours, even 48. We were having days of no power outage. And we were told then that we were paying a cost-reflective cost. -reflective cost. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised now that suddenly the, the true actual cost-reflective um, um, is now 200 and something as opposed 65. to what we were paying before. 63. Yeah, we were paying six, well, 69. 69. We're, uh, we're, we're paying 63, six, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. 69. So, so some locations have different yes. rates. They have different augmentations to the rates as well. But I don't want to talk much about Band A because Band A is, like you said, a 15%. Yeah. Let's talk about the remaining 85%. The remaining 85% that they do not, they contribute money to buy transformer and they don't still have light. And they are the majority. Mm -hmm. And they are still experiencing power grid collapse. And it seems like you, are not, they, you don't have any, That's you're not right. looking at them. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a misconception. We're looking at every Nigerian. 
we are looking at every electricity consumer. Let me first address what you said about uh, all the problems summing up and uh, crystallizing in the last two, two months. Eh? The problem in the power sector is an accumulated, accumulated problem mm. over the years, more than 50 years, since the days of uh, ECN to NEPA. ECN is the electricity company of Nigeria in the 60s to Nigeria Electric Power Authority, NEPA, to PHCM Power Holding Company of Nigeria, before it was unbundled. And we had the generating companies, the transmission company, and the distribution companies. If certain steps had been taken in the past, probably would not be at this state. What we are witnessing today is the consequence or a reflection of the actions and inactions of past administration. But we're not complaining. We are taking over both the liability and the asset, and we must find a way out of this. We have never enjoyed stable electricity. Everybody knows I'm also in Nigeria. I live here, and I've lived there all my life. But what happened in the last two months? It's also the issue of subsidy. All the subsidies that we have been enjoying since like yes, 10. How does, the, how, how does the government pay subsidy on power? Because I'm going to explain that. Yeah. The subsidies that we have been enjoying, they have not been fully funded by governments. So they have been accumulating as a debt mm. okay. mm. to the generating companies, to the transition companies. And the companies have continued to produce and generate and transmit. Let me, let Even, me pause. I'm, I'm coming, let me just land on this, okay. despite the huge debt. Mm. But in February, they came up and said, government, you are in us 1.3 trillion for generation. The gas companies are saying, you are owing us $1.3 billion for supplying gas. You must start paying us now, mm. except unless we will not produce again. Mm. And production or generation went down from 4,500 megawatts down to 3,000 megawatts. Mm. That was why you noticed that okay. nationwide so blackout in February. Mm. It was deliberate. Mm. The people refused. To. So it took me so much effort and energy to go around still appealing to them that government has them in mind okay. that will start paying down now. That is what costs. This is why I wanted you to pause, because yes. I wanted what, 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 what asked. Many Nigerians have that issue. They are not clear. So let me try to illustrate it. Mm -hmm. This is the Nigerian consumer. Mm -hmm. yes. What we are paying is not cost reflective. It's not. Mm -hmm. We are not paying the true value, value. of the tariff which we're paying. Yes. Government is saying, because I know you cannot afford it. You cannot afford it. Mm. I will pay subsidy mm. to the gen Genco. This is the Genco's. Mm. They are the ones generating. Yes. And this is a cost for their own generation. So, to, for, for example, generation is saying, okay, for me to produce for you, mm. this is going to be 1,000 Naira. Yes. But I can't, you can't afford 1,000 Naira. Mm. You can only pay 100 Naira. Mm. Me as government, I will pay 900. Mm -hmm. That 900, they've been owing Genco's. They, be they are not paying Genco's. Genco's now saying, this 900, you're not paying me. I'll be producing, you no. Know. Yes. But now that, after I was saying, I'm not producing. No, this is a new administration. Pay us. Let us. Pay us. So that's Maybe the issue. Of, that, that's the subsidy part. Let us compel them asked. to start payments. Okay, so we are clear. You understand? So we are clear on Thank that. Thank you very much. Okay. Because the past administration was outgoing. Mm. Okay. We didn't have much to squeeze out of them. Okay. But this is a really renewed mm. agenda administration. Okay. They are saying, oh, let us pull our weights for them to know that we are important mm. so that they can start paying down on the debt. You have illustrated the okay, subsidy Okay, so now let me properly. just add, because I like, I like Amaka and Ramat coming here. Mm. Yes. Just so that we are clear, because I like, yes. what, what I like about this show is that we break it down for Nigerians to understand. Yes. Mm. So what you are now saying, this 900 that I'm owing you, how do I find this money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Banana Island people, you Brand A people, mm -hmm. right? You can afford pay some of it because I'm owing them X trillion. Does it go into that's, that? That's place? even going, so, going forward. Uh -huh. That one is a legacy debt now. Oh, the so the money you're collecting from us is not, not to offset it is legacy. Not, it's yeah. not to offset What is the money it? for? What is the extra money that you're going to, to collect? to ensure that we don't add more to the existing debt. Yes, okay. Because production is ongoing. Okay. ongoing. Okay. Let me, just in one minute. You have just said it. You have hit the point now. Cost reflective for sake of argument is mm. 120 Naira. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, mm -hmm. if people are allowed to pay 120 naira sincerely, mm -hmm. there will be sustainability and continuity of this sector. Mm -hmm. Nobody will shout. Mm -hmm. Because out of the 120, the value chain is three segments generation, transmission, and distribution. The cost to the Genkos, capital investment, operation maintenance cost, staff cost, 60 naira. There's a transmission company, mm -hmm. which is the owner of the national grid, yeah. that undertake the long time, long distance transportation of power from the point of production to the point of distribution. That is TCN. Their own cost is 10 naira. 
The distribution companies that we have across Nigeria that takes power to the doorstep of household, businesses, and industries, their own is 15 naira. Mm. So total is 120 mm. that used to pay as a consumer. Mm. The distributors, the discos, are the closest to the people. Mm. So they that the one that collect everybody. of everybody. What they collect 120, mm. they will remove 15 naira at source. They will give transmission. 70 to embed, that is the middleman. Mm. 10 naira from it will go to transmission. Mm. 60 will go to generation. Mm. The government said, no, mm. I want my people to enjoy cheap electricity. Okay. Don't pay 120 naira. Mm. Pay 60 naira. That is 50% subsidy. Mm. And I will add 60 naira. When did this start? It has started since. Mm. I'm coming well, to that. Yeah, it was not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have not transparency easy. now. Mm. Power sector has always been run like a cult. Mm. Nobody knows, which is why I said, mm. this our uh, discourse has led to national awareness. Mm. So I'm saying, now, 16 are collected from mm. the consumer mm. to the disco. Disco, of course, they will deduct their own full, yes. 50 naira. Okay. Yes. And there's 10 naira left. Yes. The 10 naira left. They give it to NB. Government, uh, give it to NB. NB will ask government, give me 16 naira to augment this yes. so that I can settle the other two operators. The government said, I don't, I don't, have, have, I don't have money. Okay. Okay, they will only okay. distribute 10 naira between the two of them, which is that remaining 16 naira has now accumulated, accumulated over time. Over time. Now, right. That okay. is it. Okay. Since we okay. have, let me okay. let's go ahead, Ramat. Okay, okay Ramat. sir, since we have established the fact that, okay, this is the amount and all of that that is going to be this, what have you done in respect to making sure that all of us are all metered? That's the band A. Thank you very much. Band B, band A. Uh, every all all the that. 12 million customers. Okay. Consumers. Mm -hmm. we, we, let me tell you, like I told you, can't be giving us historically, I'm coming. Nobody likes estimated billing. Mm -hmm. When you have estimated billing, someone is cheating mm -hmm. someone. someone. Either the discos are cheating the customers, or the customers are cheating the disco, or the staff of the discos are cheating both the customer and, and the so it is not uh, acceptable. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have over 12 million electricity consumers. The mid-train penetration is just a little over 5 million. We have close to 8 million meter gap, mm -hmm. which means that households, businesses, institutions, industries that are not metered, mm -hmm. there are 8 million. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of metering, mass metering initiatives in the past, mm -hmm. accelerated metering initiatives in the past. I will tell you two. CBN started one. They started from phase zero which they completed, one million meters. Okay. I think about 950 was installed. Mm -hmm. But there were lots of discrepancies noted in that phase zero of the mass metering program, and CBN refused to move to phase one. We had a World Bank intervention mm. to meter 1,250,000 households and businesses. They started it. There were issues, litigations. The association of Meter manufacturing of Nigeria, it took them to court. But they cannot make it all imported. They must patronize them. That one also took a while. Wow. Not Thank until you. I got to the office that I resolved this issue. And they now said, OK, let's go ahead. That one is still on. Now, Mr. President said, we cannot be doing all these uh, petty, petty initiatives. Let's do a big bang so that we can harmonize all the initiatives under one umbrella. And he created what we called Presidential Metering Initiative, the PMI. And he appointed the council. And my privilege, he made me the chairman of this council. Okay. The target he has given us is that Nigerians, in the next five years, nobody should have estimated billion again. Mm -hmm. Because metering is also expensive. What he has done is minimum of two million meters installation on a yearly basis over the next four to five years. That's about 10 million meters to be brought, to, 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 to be installed in people's homes. And it's given us a seed capital of about 100 billion. And we need about 400 to 500 billion in an annual basis to achieve this. You can see that it's a huge fund that is required. Seed capital, 100 billion. We're going to have debt capital of another 400 billion. Mm -hmm. And we are already having support and assistance from NSI, that's the Nigerian uh, Sovereign Investment Authority, okay. to give that loan. And this thing will be paid back over a long time. So I can assure you that Mr. President is 
first addressing the issue of metering. And we are going to get there, inshallah. Okay. Which is why okay. I always like us to see power project as a journey. Because it takes a little bit mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is to begin that journey. Mm -hmm. And you'll be making progress on a yearly basis. When you are doing repairs, mm -hmm. even the road, I made an example of Lagos by the Expressway. It was being repaired, renovated and upgraded for almost 12 years. During that repair, there were pains, even more pains than the usual. But, but when we finished, we, we, so we started we, enjoying. So, so, so we must bear this of, a bit. For, for, for concerning the issue of meeting, I'll come to you, Makara. Mm. Because Nigerians are saying that, okay, for those of us that are in the interim, yes. pain estimated, can government do something to reduce the burden? Because sometimes these estimated buildings are um, way past estimated. But let me tell you, there's already um, a regulation on okay. estimated billing. Mm. There's a cap. Okay. There's a maximum mm. you can charge a customer. Exactly. Do people know yes. that? Yes. Let me tell you, just a month ago, yeah. there were penalties and there were refunds mm. made to customers oh. in billions of naira. Mm, wow. really? For those, this, yeah, yeah, billions. Not of things like no, no, it was out in the papers. But it's even like For those that we felt they overcharged the customers, mm. they did a bit NERC, the Nigerian mm. Electricity Regulatory Commission oh, said, re refund. Billions, I can, I'm sure of that. I signed I up. I did not get any reform. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is going to be continuous. Mm -hmm. We are going to be very, very, very strict okay. with the management of the discourse now. Okay. okay. We are going to be very strict. So, there will be sanctions mm -hmm. for non compliance. Any disco that is indicted, you can see that even in this recent review of tariff upward, mm -hmm. Abuja disco has been charged, penalized 200 million. You understand? For actually. Uh, uh, putting together some communities mm. as band A when they are not enjoying band A service. Absolutely. This will be because the Electricity Act of 2023 has allowed us to do this. In the past, the PSRA, the Power Sector Reform Act, did not allow us with punitive sanctions. Yeah. 10,000 naira per day for a disco that is airing, that is being indicted. 10,000 naira per day for 30 days is just 300,000. For one year, it's 3.6 million. If any disco committed any offense, they'll just write a check of 3.6 million to NEC, and that is the end. But now, there is no limit to such penalties and sanctions. Before, the NEC was not given the power to remove the border management of discos when they err or they commit an offense. Now but now, the EA 2023 has amended Found that. Him. So, we have the power to do all this. But why we have not been seeing a lot of this is we came, I came into the office about seven, eight months ago. The first three, four months, you have to be on top of what you are doing. Mm. You must investigate the issues, establish genuine issues with this industry, then list out or document workable solutions mm. that you start implementing. All right, so after ahead. six months, we will now start implementing. So you can see that we have hit the ground running yeah. and we will okay. not stop. Let me, let me go you. on a short break. When we come back, we'll start with Amaka. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have the Honorable Minister of Power, Mr. Adilabo, here in the midst of women, Council of Women, <laughs> still answering to Nigerian women. Amaka, go ahead, please. Okay, so, um, Honorable Minister, in fairness to you, on one part to uh, understand that energy sense is common sense, right? Yes. And I was brought up to um, turn off a, a room or power source. Well, when I leave a room, I should turn that off if it's not in use, but not refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And now you've explained to us that it was a joke, yes. right? Not, not intended the way... You know, so, and then I'm also happy you, you mentioned the Electricity Act. So let me come down to that. For example, Section 116 of the Act mm -hmm. provides that as in, was, it was, was then the first, first place to prevent abuse of, of um, market power. Do you think your office has adhered strictly to the provisions of sorry. Section 116 of the Act in terms of um, notifications? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We did this, and I can confirm to you authoritatively. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. The, D, the EA Act, that was the Electricity Act of 2023, signed in June 2023 by our principal president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, mm -hmm. is quite comprehensive and elaborate, and it has corrected all the errors of the past or previous legislations. Number one, it allows the National Electricity Regulatory Commission mm -hmm. to undertake tariff review 
mm. might not review every six months because tariff building block is made up of a lot of variable parameters. Mm. A lot of them are FX mm. based, mm. Mm. a lot of them are inflation based. Mm. So as prices of equipment, appliances, and running the power operators are going up, mm. supposed to reflect in the tariff. Mm. Over six months, maybe minor review because of the shortness of the period. But after every two years, they are allowed to make major review to the tariff. The last review was done in 2022. Since 2022, we have seen escalation in price of goods and services, exchange rates, the transformers, the power cables, the power lines, and all that. Even the transmission towers. We are saying, OK, we have to do this review. And we have been contemplating this months back. What the section required us to do was to make wide consultation mm -hmm. and notification to the people that would bear this tariff. I can tell you, NAC, they started these consultations long ago. Mm. You can confirm from the discourse, even from the electricity consumers at various locations. They did regional consultations, workshops, and seminars to sensitize people about the effect of liquidity squeeze in the sector and why tariff must be reviewed. They did that. Now, when I resumed, if you have been following my programs, I've always been hammering on the fact that the major issue, which other past administrations have shied away from discussing mm. in this industry, there are two. Liquidity squeeze, mm. lack of liquidity, necessary for continuity and sustainability, then infrastructural deficit, which you must fix. And I said, the only way out of this is for us to review the tariff. I've been saying it. And I consulted almost all the stakeholders in the sector, the Jenkos, the transmission company, the discos, uh, the co some customers, some consumers. And this culminated into a retreat that we had in December, December 14 to 16 at Transcorp Hilton, where we called ourselves to a three-day retreat to tre discuss all this. And the major issue discussed was about the tariff review. So we did the wide consultation required. So we will not do, do, we will not do anything that is outside of the law, that is illegal. President Bola Metin will not even allow us to do that. All right. So I can say that we complied with the section that you raised. Let me Thank ask you. us, go back a bit to the issue of subsidy, because I, I, was, I looked at a report that um, by human rights lawyer, Mr. Femi Falano, said back in 2022 that the Buhari administration has stopped paying subsidy mm -hmm. in power. Yes. And this is part of the thing that leads to people's l lack of belief in the system. One second, you stop paying subsidy. The next second, you're saying that we are owing Jenkos and mm. transfer. You're wondering what is going on. There's, there's a lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. So help us clarify because you're saying that there's money still being owed. He's saying that government stopped paying subsidy back in 2022. Two things which I will clarify. Payment of subsidy is different from removal of subsidy. Mm. Sincerely, mm. government has not been paying subsidy. I'm confirming that to you. If they had been paying subsidy, we would not have the historical debt that we have in the industry. It does not mean that they removed subsidy. If the last review of tariff, let's even say that, okay, as of 2022, it was close to cost reflective tariff, where it was 69 for band A, about 54 for band B, down to 40 something for band E. Let's say it was close to. But between that 2022 and 2024, like I said earlier, we have seen movement in prices. We have seen exchange rate escalations. You understand? So which means, and we have not reviewed the tariff, which means that the cost of producing or generating and transmitting and distributing power has ballooned. The customers have not been made to pay. So the subsidy was there, but it was not being paid, which is why I said governments find it difficult to fund or to pay subsidy. In 2022, subsidy was 260 million. You understand? Mm. In 2023, subsidy was 720, I mean, I mean billion, 220, 260 billion, 2022. 2023, it was 720 billion, out of which only 400 was funded. There was a 320 billion that was brought forward. It was things were increasing then. In 2023, if we must retain the tariff at the current level, mm. government requires 2.9 trillion as subsidy. We are saying this is too much. Let us see how we can actually bring it down. And I mean, my gratitude to the president is to this grant. He said, Bio, we cannot remove subsidy 100%. 
I was voted in to remove the sufferings of Nigeria, to alleviate their predicaments. I should not be adding to this. We've done enough in the two of harmonizing exchange rates and the other one of removing subsidy okay. from wealth. So whatever we can do to meet them, middle ground, for those that can afford it, mm. you understand? Let us do it. I said, I'm not, I'm not approving. Because you see our pockets. A is feeling like. You see our pockets and you know we can afford it. Exactly. We are not punishing. You are not trying to punish you. Check account. I said, I'm not going to punish you. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, they are better off. If, let me tell you. what they are getting the power supply. I get they are getting it. If they are getting it, they are better off. We do have a bigger problem. You know, we've discussed the challenge because um, obviously we've discussed the challenge of the, the subsidy. Now Nigerians know that government has been subsidizing power, so, uh, power, power for them for many years. Yes. And it, has, it wasn't paid under the last administration, which is why there's a pile up. Yes. We get that. We also understand the fact that the, what we are paying now, what you are asking Band A to pay, is it cost reflective? It is. It is cost reflective. So we we're not subsidizing Band A for okay. now. Okay. Okay. And again, the building blocks contain a lot of variable parameters. Mm. The exchange rate is there. Yeah, now yeah. that we have seen mm. that one trend, would that affect it? Will it will affect it. Affect it will right. affect it. Now, That's for it. generating, yes. the entire generation of Nigeria, mm. pata pata bring together, is not enough to solve the problem of Lagos State's need. You know. And it seems like we are not even talking ah. enough about hey. the need to increase mm -hmm. generation. Yeah. Uh, can you please? Even what's being generated, yes. we're not even consuming it. No, because there are even, there's even stories that we cannot yes. transmit. No, we so transmit. They say we don't have capacity for transmission, sir. We've read it Thank in the papers yes. that our transmission is many years old yeah. and the equipments old. are old. Yeah. And I, I, I would blame Nigerians for when Nigerians, it's just as I would blame governments for because they say even when Nigerians, the government puts in new equipment, yeah. Nigerians will go there and go and, and steal, go and steal the new equipment. So you don't need to go there. We've already, we've yabbed ourselves. We've yabbed our so, people. We have called ourselves yeah. out. Okay. We but you, we are calling out, out the government on generation and transmission. That's how right. are you holding generator, Genco's account, um, accountable to increase their capacity? And how are we ensuring that transmission is able to carry what we say they should transmit yes. to? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like I told you, I told you, I'm an accountant. So when it comes to businesses, I know a lot of things that are supposed to be in place for that business to be able to run seamlessly mm. you understand the generation that we have today we have majorly two forms the hydropower electric mm -hmm. generation where we have That's... kanji we have jeba we have shiroro we have gurara kashimbila dadinkua mm. and the uh, uh, um, the other one that we were just about to, that's zungeru mm -hmm. we just completed mm. it's supplied about 25 percent of our total mm. power installed the gas powered plants that they call Tama plants, mm. the egg beans of this yeah. world, Olon Shogu, Omotosho, Iwobo, Afam, Ugeli, Giregu, and others, mm. is about 75% mm. of our generation. Okay. You understand? Hydro requires water, which is it's cheaper. It's which cheaper. is available. Yeah. You understand? Even during the dry season, mm. the water level goes down, down. nature comes and but that's for a short period. Mm. The Tama plant, they require gas. Mm as feedstock, more like the raw materials for them to produce, mm -hmm. this gas is also not cheap. Mm -hmm. You understand? Which is why when government mm -hmm. has not been paying them, it's been difficult for them to, to pay the gas suppliers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the gas pipeline infrastructure too is also defective. Mm -hmm. You defective see vandalism. pipeline vandalization, the pressure not being enough, no compressor, no booster here and there. The installed capacity totally in Nigeria today for the national grid, because we have other embedded plants that are within a state or within and some captive within a particular company. Mm. For the national grid, total install capacity today, hydro plus gas is over 13,000 megawatts. Mm. But the highest we have ever generated was 5,800 megawatts, specifically in March 2021. And the national grid was able to wheel 5,800 mm. to our people, yes. Okay. But the issue is demand. Yeah. In as much as our power requirement is huge, we generate a lot of power in Nigeria, over 50,000 megawatts. A lot of them are generated in houses and companies using generator fuel and diesel. Mm. But the national grid, when the discos get this power and they supply it to all the feeders, there are some feeders 
that distribute to households, they'll be able to collect their money. Mm. But a lot of the feeders, you understand, to the lower band customers, when they distribute, they won't be able to collect the money. And there's also a lot of power theft. So this goes started rejecting power. Yeah, we read that. To those feeders, you understand? So the demand became so low. So that even generating companies cannot even produce based on their capacity mm. from, because of lack, lack of stimulation of demand. That's what we are trying to do now, to stimulate demand first, then ramp up generation. That's number one. Number two is inadequacy of gas supply. Not only in quantity, but also in quality because of the vandalized pipelines, the lack of compressors, lack of boosters. Before power gets from the Niger Delta, before it gets to a motor shop power plant in, in uh, Ore, the quality is poor and the pressure is low. Before talking about getting to a launch of power plant in Papalanto, in fact, no, no, no quality. Which is why you see a lot of these generating plants. Eh? They will have six turbines. For example, I have visited all these locations. Because if I start telling you what and what we have done, well, in, well since I got to the office, we will not leave this place today. But to Nigerians, sorry, just one minute. Okay. To Nigerians, once they cannot stand up and switch on the light and the light comes You have not done anything. Not done anything no, 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 no. Which is why distribution is very important to us. Whatever we're doing in generation or in uh, um, transmission, if it's not translating into distribution, we have not done. So we are doing so much. And these are the underground issues that we need to resolve. So those are the issues with the generating companies. And the target that we have today is, once we have seen the demand coming back up, mm. I promise Nigerians that within the next six months, we are going to ramp up our generation to minimum of 6,000 to start with. Okay. And every okay, six sir. months, we will be ramping it up. Okay, sir. And our transmission grid yeah. has the capacity. Mm. If it could win 5,800 as far back as March 2021, three years ago, with all the investment mm. in enhancement and upgrade on infrastructure in transmission, it will win over 6,000. And TCN management is telling me that they are sure of 8,100 capacity mm. for this. And there are also projects we are doing to make sure that we upgrade the capacity of the transmission infrastructure. Okay, me, I am bothered because I know yes. I'm going to be on the band A. You are, of, yeah. obviously. So, <laughs> so the band A, <laughs> so how are you ensuring that most of the meters are not going to be bypassed? Yeah. Yes. To make sure that oh, I get what, you pay. what, I'm, what I pay for. Add, the reason why I'm asking this question is this, is because, okay, for example, some people who stay in rented apartments mm. in those band A, whatever, these meters that I give you, is it our, is it for, is it our personal meters? Is it for us? So that, such that when we are moving to another house, are we going <laughs> to move with our meter? Because if I move to another house and maybe that person bypassed his meter, so I'll been... go there now and so let, me, let me attach, let me attach my question steps. to her question. Yes. Because my question is similar to hers yeah. in the sense that, so there are people who are having um, power theft. There are people who are, who are bypassing, who are stealing power. Who are stealing power. Yes. Now those guys, I mean, it seems like when you, when you make band A pay for this, 225. You're making us pay for the inefficiencies of discos to catch or to regulate those people who are involved in power theft. You are yeah. stealing power. That, that, you are They're not paying. Yeah. Though there's no money. Mm -hmm. So the reason why you're not getting money is because you're not, we, you're not we making, making sure. The ones that we can collect so from. those people who are always paying, people like Ramat mm -hmm. and Tokwe, who are always paying, you're not saying collect more money from them because they're the ones that are up for the ones that make are up for those ones. So is that fair on us? Okay, exactly. And let me, no, and no, how no, you no, ensuring this will be used as... I can answer everything at all. So how do you now... So what's the disciplinary action against the discos now for not doing their job? Because if they don't do their job, it falls get back on the hours. consumers. Right? To, so, to, to add a part C to that question, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah. because I heard you yesterday saying that even the discos yes. were not technically ready or financially ready, ready for yes. this job. Yes. They didn't have the capacity to even do the job that they are doing. So what are you also doing to ensure training to make them do the, do right, the right thing, thing so that we don't have to Nine suffer for it? Yes. Thank you very much. Mm. There are so mm. many questions wrapped up in one. Yes. one, one. <laughs> but I can assure you I will take it one after the other okay. without wasting time. Okay. Number one, let me say that the tariff fixing is based on identified as stated parameters. Okay. You cannot pay for the power theft mm. being committed by another customer. It's not possible. 
there is transparency of, of no there's transparency in the competition of tariff mm -hmm. and the parameters are well stated the capital investment of the generating companies their operations and maintenance the adjustment for exchange rate gas cost inflation rate and a lot of things it is stated and you cannot slot in anything okay that is neck for you so number one number two the which is why i said the problem in the power sector is so much and huge mm -hmm. and it has accumulated over time and i'm happy that you're also on top of what these issues are, which make my job easy. The power theft of bypassing of meter is prevalent in our society. Even there are some affluent individuals, when they are starting their construction, it's right from the foundation that they ask the contractors to remove some things, to remove some things and not connected to the meter. And they are also part of people that will be complaining that they are not having stable power. You can see yeah. that we are actually the ones that we are the architect of our own mis misfortunes. And we'll correct it. That's what we call now, which is why you will not see the discourse asking to go and buy your meter if you don't have meter. Because there must be standardization mm. and compliance to some certain technical standards. But above all, there's what we call meter data management system, MDMS. Mm. So when we are implementing this, our mass meter acquisition program, Every disco must have an MDMA so that remotely from their office, they can monitor activities on your meter. When you bypass, it will alert them. If they want to switch you down, they can switch you off from their office. Is that the reason they are asking everybody to get the new meters right yeah, now? Yeah, the smart meters. Mm, okay. The smart meters can do all this. When we are able to do all this, bypassing will not be possible. Tampering with meter will not be possible. Mm. Because that's what we call NEMSA, the Nigeria Electricity Management Service Agency, which are the chief inspector, technical inspector of the industry, they must certify every meter now and ensure that every meter comply with the technical standard as specified. So I'm saying that all those problems of the past, we have put them in like a, a pool if you have or a bucket. So, and we are picking them one after the other to be resolving. And you trust me. Problem of 50 years, mm -hmm. over 50 years, will not be resolved in one year. But, we've had but we must be making progress. Mm -hmm. I'm the 47th power minister in Nigeria yes, today. We interviewed the 46th. The now. 46. Mm. Well, they, not, they were brilliant people, mm. patriotic, smart people, ready to write their names in gold, ready to make a difference. But there's a way the sector mm. has disenabled them mm. to perform the way they wanted to perform. Mm -hmm. But the president said, what happened to your predecessors will not happen to you. Just have the boldness, the courage to do the right thing. So far, you are fair on Nigerians. And that's what we are doing. And we are ready to make a difference. And I will make the difference. But we, we should trust the judgment of Mr. President. Okay. He put me there because he believes I can handle it. And I'm assuring you that I've never failed in my past uh, responsibilities in the past. Uh, social I will not fail. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let Amaka yeah. jump yeah. in. Yeah. I will yeah. make a difference. Yeah. I'm promising okay. Nigeria. You talked, you talked yes. about the certification of the of, of the, the meters, meters and yes. that is the board. I hope it's not like the Nigerian thing where uh, people are supposed to do a job and then they just they, they take their time. What is the time frame in which if you submit, you buy a meter, you submit, to, um, you pay for a meter, what's the time frame from when you do timeline. that to when you, the timeline? So it's, it's yeah. not frustrating. So it's not frustrating yeah, because I understand you already you. know Nigeria. I understand you. Yeah. You know, this is new Nigeria mm -hmm. and we are all working at it. It's my job. Is your job, it's everybody's responsibility. Exactly. When you see something, say something. Mm. You cannot guarantee people 100% mm. that they will comply with the new, mm. the new sheriff in town. Mm. They, will, they are there to also mm. sabotage what you are doing. I told you, there are cabals, there are cartels, and there are hawks in this sector too that will not make this sector work. You understand? Because of their own selfish interest. But we are saying, no, it won't be possible. When you see such, Please, do not hesitate to escalate, mm. and we will attend to it. We are putting the structures, the systems, and the institutions in place to ensure a long-term sustainability of this sector. So it won't be a flash in the pan. We are addressing the root cause of all these issues, not just addressing the symptoms. That is why it will not, you won't say it immediately. Mm. But let me tell you, before one, two years, 
you start singing People our, are asking them our to, praise. asking to fire you because they said, ah, this guy, he's an accountant. Why uh -huh. do you make him a power minister? What yes. does he know? Mm -hmm. They're saying hashtag, the power minister must go. Uh -huh. And have somebody here say, all this English she's speaking. They have a comment here. Uh -huh. She's from money. She says, we don't understand all this grammar. Oh. The <laughs> ministry cannot boast of anything it has achieved so far since his administration started. How long does it take to implement all this English? Mm -hmm. I, I have so a, to the average Nigerian, yeah, there's, like, a, there's a lot but, going on. But, so, but, but, but I have comments on the That's contrary. the patience. Yes. Okay, I, have, I have several comments on the contrary. Adnam says, I'm convinced Tokwe is doing a good job. People should pay for their bills and stop stealing power. Mm -hmm. Somebody, as in, I have several YouTube comments are convinced based on okay. what you are saying that okay. you are convinced. But so I have a question. Okay. So we have both sides. Sincerely, it's yeah. not a popularity contest. <laughs> we just, we just want job. power. Sincerely. Exactly. We just want to do the power. job. Yes. It does not matter what people say. Yes. yes. The yes, end will justify the means, I can okay. tell you. Right. These are temporary comments. By the time we are able to see. Six months, they're holding you. You said 6,000 6, megawatts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. holding. What, what month are we in now? We're in April, 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 June, July, July August, August, September, October. 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 Like, October, we'll call you back. We will have 6,000 megawatts generated. Come and sit down. You're said here. I'm coming here anytime. Go ahead, Tokwe. Okay, your question, please. Yes, Honorable Minister. Thank you. I know that you are aware of what is happening, the disruption between Nessie by the ECO electric distribution company. You know, yes. we've read damning reports, mm -hmm. emails establishing acts of fraud you know, this through and all that. workers, mm -hmm. you know. So what exactly is happening with the eco distribution company and what is your office doing? Yeah. What's, the, what's your office going to do mitigate. With, to mitigate this crime that we have seen? Crime. How are Allegation you it? Allegation. Mm -hmm. Allegations. Thank you crime. for correcting that. Mm -hmm. Allegations of crime, wow. sir. Allegation backed with evidence is crime. Mm -hmm. yes. At this point, you know, you an accused... The suspect is not deemed guilty uh, until he's so, so proved. Is... Thank you very much. Let me tell you, it's all about regulation. Just like you have in banks. Mm -hmm. When you're having bought issues in a commercial bank, mm -hmm. or any bank for that matter, the CBN mm -hmm. is the regulator. Mm -hmm. To start with, you should not meddle in the internal operations, internal wranglings of a, pri of a private company. Right. Not until you start seeing that this thing is going to degenerate into a level that it will affect the customers mm. that are supposed to be serving. Mm. We are on top of the issues that they are having in Ecodisco. I've spoken to the chairman several times. I've spoken to the other director several times. And I've spoken to even the MD, Tino Adesonda, several times. What I've done, let me tell you, the way, but well, people need to understand the job of the minister very well too. The minister is the last result. Mm. I provide complete. Oversight. You have oversight for the industry. You have the operators. I don't own a generating company. Mm. I don't own a transmission company. I don't own a distribution company. So my, my job is medium to long term mm. to ensure that I expedite national development mm. through formulation of the appropriate policies and establishment of appropriate structures, systems, and institutions to provide the conducive atmosphere mm. for the operators to run and guarantee long-term sustainability of the power sector so that we'll be able to provide stable, uh, functional, reliable, and cost-effective electricity to households, businesses, and industries. Between the operators and me as the minister, there's also the regulator mm. who directly regulate yeah. their yeah. daily yeah. operations. Okay. What I've done was to call the chairman of the okay. mm. regulator. More minutes, intervene. Mm. He has held meeting with them. Mm. Okay. Let us see how far. That's Your feed machine don't go to war with you. Yeah. Mm. If the regulators cannot resolve it, then it comes to me, okay. and I will meet yeah. with everybody, and we will the bills. You know, we have very still. little time, so we, we have to squeeze as many questions to, as possible. We have to protect the consumers. Okay. Mm. Consumer protection is one of my major issues, my right. major mm. responsibility, to ensure that customers are not unduly. I need Touch. to ask you about Siemens. Thank you. We're just hearing yes. Siemens here, yes. Siemens exactly. there, in the country. Okay. They are doing this. They okay. have the. Are they coming to collect our jobs? Are they bringing transformers? Are they taking okay. transformers? That's we just right. hearing Siemens. Ah, but we don't know what are they. What are they doing? Gun, 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 gun in Nigeria. Uh, what yes. is their work? Give Thank you. Us. Thank you very much. You know the the Siemens project. Just give me two, three minutes to explain this. Okay. If you also listen to our last press conference, I gave some detailed explanation about Siemens. Siemens project started 2018 okay. under the Buhari's administration. Mm. And what did they say? Oh, they went to Egypt mm. and they saw what Siemens mm. did together with SWD. About 8,000 or 13,000 megawatts mm. they were able to produce, were able to transmit and distribute mm. within a period of, say, five years. Mm. And they said, ah, this is what we want. Let it be a turnkey. 
give it to Siemens. Okay. Let them work on our transmission mm. and distribution segment. Mm. We have the generation, you understand, mm. to make sure that it is taken up to the level that they witnessed in Egypt. Okay. And they appointed the project champion, mm. who happened to be the chief of staff then, mm. late Abba Kiari of blessed memory, mm. to champion this. And they started, you understand? Mm. They agreed on a government to government agreement that the German government, through their export credit agency, will give Nigeria a $2.3 billion loan okay. to fund these projects. Right. And they will appoint their own company, which is Siemens, mm. to oversee the project. That was the idea. The process of signing, of looking at the agreement of everything, of course, it took time, 2018 to 2020. Mm. 2020, yes. that was COVID. Okay. Mm. You understand? It slowed it down. And unfortunately, it was during this COVID that the project champion died. died. Passed. Okay. It passed. You understand? 2021, we started transition. Mm. Elections, the new government coming. So there was no traction okay. during that period. Okay. You understand? Mm. And the project was supposed to be in phases. There's what they call the pilot phase that will serve as a proof of concept mm. to see that is this project going to solve our problem? Once we are satisfied with the pilot, we'll go to phase one, we'll go to phase two. When the government of Ashwaju, mm. Ahmed Bolatinubu, came in, he said, ah, let's look at this project. How is it going? You know, a, a project that you are not part of the initiation, mm. you need to review, you need that to review how, how, how it has fared over time before you now decide whether to move on or to cut it. Mm. There has not been any financial commitment of everybody, anybody. Wow. We can easily say that we don't want or we want. But when we looked at it, mm. the German Chancellor came to Abuja. He met with the president. Mm. I was there and we discussed. Said, ah, there is some sense in continuing with this project. So let's look at it. We also went to meet them at the African Business Summit in, in Berlin, in Germany. We sat down again with the Chancellor of Germany you know, and their own finance minister, and sorry, energy minister and the finance minister. We looked at it and we agreed that, no, this is a good project. Germany was still committed. Nigeria was ready to continue. And we said, okay, we now have to sign an acceleration agreement that will make sure that we kickstart the project again okay. to be able to achieve the knowledgeable objectives that they had from the beginning. Okay. And we agreed, okay, that was in, October, in November. Let's meet in Dubai at COP28. And you see that the pres our president was there, the German, German chancellor was there, Siemens was there, and our own SPV, that's the special purpose, purpose vehicle created for it, FGM Power Company, was there. And the acceleration agreement was signed. Okay. And they agreed that they are going to continue. We agreed that we are going to continue. Since then, what has happened? We started the pilot phase. This December till date, we are almost concluding the pilot phase. The pilot phase involves importation of 10 big power transformers. Okay. An importation of 10 power mobile substations okay. for us to fix in various locations across the country. Okay. For the power transformers, the 10 have arrived. Okay. We have installed and commissioned five. Okay. I was in Kogi, I was in Jeba, mm -hmm. I was in uh, Iwobo in Bini, I was in uh, Abuja, mm -hmm. and one place in Kano to install and commission all this. Okay. And ask them, it has boosted mm -hmm. the capacity of transmission. Mm -hmm. Remaining five, they're installing them. As supporting the transmission. Transmission. Yeah. So, 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 so I'm, I'm coming. In the next two weeks, mm. as, two weeks to one month, I should be able to commission the remaining five. For the mobile substation, that's the very interesting part. Mm. You know what they call a substation? Mm -hmm. Those 330 kV yeah. substation, yeah. where you see all the high voltage power line, yeah. or 132 kV mm. substation. Those are transmission substations that supply power to the distribution company, mm. which is stepped down to 33 kV and 11 kV mm. to be taken to your house at 450 yeah. volts. Yeah. Mm. All those substations take mm. between three and five years mm. to establish. Mm. Yes, well, so they, have to, they have to system. manufacture the transformer, mm. they have to fix it, they have to do the lines. Mm. But the mobile substations that we have, mm. if there is a problem in any of those permanent substations, mm. they can before they can now, the people may not have light for one year or two years. But now, we can drive it down from the Lagos yard, you know, the Nemsa yard here. Mm. And within one day, drive mm. the substation down to the place, you understand? And do the connection in we two days time. and restore lights. No, and we have, we have 10 of that. We have installed three. We are commissioning it next week. Mm. One in Aja, one in Kano, another one 
in a, what they call it, Agbara, the industrial cluster. Mm -hmm. We have seven left that we're going to be taking to where they have transmission issues. Mm -hmm. That is the okay. impact okay. of we have very little substitution. Time. Let me... We'll now go to phase one, okay. which is the bigger part that will address mm -hmm. both transmission and the distribution. Okay. We'll change transformers, we'll change power lines, we'll change power, power poles. Let me, let, okay. let me throw in one question. Injection substation. We'll okay, let, let me throw in one question for the masses, right? Because the economy is hard and everybody... I you know, I need three hours so, for so, this so kind we, of interview. So, so that Nigeria will know who is responsible what for we're the doing. replacement of, 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 from the old meter to the smart meter. meter. And then what happens to the money that we paid for the old meter? Would there be a subsidy from discos or like what's, go what's going on? Because you people already have old meter. What's going to encourage them to move on to the smart meters. And people don't have meters. And people don't, people don't even have don't meters have at, at all. all. So who have old meters and they're not even, they're still giving them, they just feel like it's not working. You don't want them to move move yes, to smart meters. So what's going the on? Questions, another question. Mm. There are I, there is someone, and Tiani sends this question that there's somebody she knows, five weeks now they don't have, transmitter. the transformer went bad. Mm. The company, the discos have told them that there are hotels in that place that should contribute money to buy transformer. And the hotels are saying they don't want to carry that body yes. because they bought the previous one. Please help us address the question concerning changing meters that are already working mm -hmm. for new ones when so people don't have. Yeah. And who is carrying the cost? And who is carrying the cost for replacing transformers? Some are months without light okay. because of no transformer. Thank you very you much. You have just two minutes. Okay, the issue of meter, let me tell you, mm -hmm. if you have installed meters mm -hmm. recently in the last one to two years, mm -hmm. they are smart meters. Mm -hmm. The only thing they need to do is to configure it mm -hmm. to fit the meter data management system with the MDMS. Mm. So you don't need to change your meters, mm. except the old, old archaic mm. analog meters, okay. which are no longer compliant with the smart meter mm. requirements. That's number one. And when we give out meters, mm. there'll be an arrangement that government will make sure it does not inflict hardship on the consumers. Mm. To ensure that it is paid over time in a way that you don't even feel it. That's the arrangement. Mm. Then the issue of transformers, I have said it several that provision of transformer is not the responsibility of the consumers. Mm -hmm. It is the duty of the discos. It's part of their distribution infrastructures, which they are collecting tariff for. Mm -hmm. The cost of transformer is, in, is built inside the tariff. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we know that there are some areas that are attracted to some discos, that they, they can abandon them mm -hmm. because they are low income area, they won't be able to get their money. Mm -hmm. As the minister, I have a budget that is also buoyant enough for government intervention in these areas. So that we will distribute thousands of transformers across Nigeria. I'm promising you that. And I've said it several times. When we start implementing this budget, we'll identify those areas and ensure that government intervene by providing transformers. Even there are some rural areas where we are going to provide alternative source of energy. Mm. The mini grids, the micro grids for the small agri businesses, mm. for the rural schools, rural hospitals, mm. even for homes. We have solar home systems too mm. that we can actually give to these people. Mm. You understand? Mm. And even street lights for security. There are solar systems. So mm. our area is doing a lot. In fact, we also plan to bring out a number of our federal institutions, mm. universities, mm and teaching hospitals out of the national grid and give them their own mini grid. And in the next uh, one or two weeks, we are commissioning about eight universities okay. that we are giving we have to two, wrap up. four okay. megawatts of power so that they don't have to rely on national grid. The last thing I want to mention here before I leave is the subnational governments mm -hmm. must also rise up. The governors. The governors, the local government chairman. The EA Act has allowed all of them to play in power. You see what happened in... Abia, 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 Abia State. Abia State. Yeah. That's a backup power for the state. Mm -hmm. If anything happens to the national grid, they don't have mm. to suffer. Mm -hmm. Every state must have nothing less than 50 megawatts of power. And we are working on that mm. with the uh, solar uh, source of power that we are we working on. We should hold our governors uh, also responsible. responsible. They must be responsible mm. too. Even in managing the discos, because government still own 40% of the discos. Out of this 40%, state government own almost 25%. Why are they not getting involved? involved? They should call them to performance. Exactly. It's not every... I mean, Abuja, one person. You know, we have 36 states to manage. If you have the support of the governors to, 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 to assist oh. us, mm -hmm. it's going to be easier for us. You understand? And the private sector, too, are being called upon that. This EA has uh, made everything possible mm -hmm. for everybody to participate in the power sector. Mm -hmm. So uh, my last appeal to Nigeria is that they should still be patient with us. Okay. They should have the trust and confidence. And with time, 
will make a significant difference thank you very in much. this That's all industry. we can take mm -hmm. on the show. Thank you so the much. Pity, uh, there's not much time. Yeah, that will yes, come back. I know Bye. Elijah Nima wanted to be here when she was first traveled to the first stage. She mm -hmm. had plenty of bullets for you. I know. Uh, <laughs> she couldn't make it. You can still contact me after worry. the program. We'll bring, uh -huh. like to bring you back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So definitely three two. months. Let, okay, yeah, three six months. months. October. No, let's just even start with three, three months. months. Okay, okay. I'll come three before then. Then come again. Yeah. Yeah. Dollar Punk can easily talk all to right. me. And, uh, <laughs> That's all we can take on Thank today's you show. Much. Hope you've enjoyed the show and learned a few things as we have. Have a great weekend. We'll see you with the leader, um, your view pigeon tomorrow morning. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. Bye bye.